In 2012, there was indictment of 63 reputed Bloods gang members and associates. It happened following a two-year-long joint investigation which began after an increase in shooting incidents. The spike in shootings occurred in the vicinity of 169th Street and Washington Avenue, an area known as the Nine, in the Morrisania section of the Bronx. Much of the gang-affiliated violence occurred in and around two housing developments, Webster Projects and the Governor Morris Projects. They were the New Mafia, a ruthless Bronx-based cabal of drug dealers and gunrunners that officials called the most dangerous gang in the city. The Mac Bowlers were, a set of the National Bloods gang, and formed a terrifying band of crime happy hoods, who owned much of New York street drug trade, and dominated Rikers Island. There, they would control the contraband and decide who lived and died. One law enforcement source referred to them as, the top dogs in the city. There are more of them than any other Bloods, and they're highly organized, extremely violent, very powerful. Other gangs fear them. The gang, which also calls itself the Mac Bowler family, was originally based in the Morrisania section of the Bronx, but had tentacles across the city, especially in Brooklyn and Staten Island, as well as upstate in New Jersey. It is still like this today in present times. Its violence had claimed at least five innocent bystanders, three of them were teenage girls. They included Vada Vasquez, 15, a Bronx student who miraculously survived being hit in the head with a stray bullet during a revenge attack on the gang by its well-armed rival, the Gorilla Stone Bloods. That was in 2009. Another victim was not so lucky. Bronx prom queen Samantha Guzman, 18, died in a spray of bullets on Mother's Day 2006, when she and her friends wandered into a Mac Bowler shootout in Morrisania. The Mac Bowler's reach extends along the eastern seaboard, where the gang's operations, gun running, robbery and kidnapping, can be found in Maryland, Virginia, the Carolinas, Kentucky and Georgia. In one remarkably brazen assault in March, jailed Mac Bowler member, Calvin Melton, orchestrated the abduction of a North Carolina prosecutor's father. The snatching was retaliation. Victim Frank Jansen's daughter Colleen, an assistant district attorney in Wake Forest, had put Melton away for life in 2012. A thug's pistol whipped Jansen and held him for five days before the FBI rescued him. The leader of the Mac Bowlers is convicted killer Larry O'Calderon, 37, a Bronx-born career criminal who spent 17 years in state prison in two stints and was now faced with life for murdering a subordinate. Larry O is known as the godfather or don of the Mac Bowler brims. He and his top associate, Eli Blood Eli Rios, 38, who is doing life upstate for homicide, overseen an extensive network in the state and city jails, as head of a mafia-like commission that dictated all family matters, including the sanctioning of hits on rivals and turncoats. The decisions of this board of directors conveyed with the help of girlfriends and family through cryptic messages on Facebook and Twitter, affected what happened on the street and behind bars. There were at least 525 confirmed members, although police suspected the actual number was much higher, as it didn't count scores of associates and the YGs or YBs who wanted to join. Initiation rights ranged from being jumped in. The proposed member must endure a group beating, to committing murder. Not all survive. Shaliver Douse, 14, was told he needed to carry out a hit to be accepted. He missed his target, then was killed by cops. Rookie officers said they encountered him chasing and shooting at another youth on 151st Street, and he refused to drop his gun. The team grew up in the Morris houses in the Bronx, where street crews are a threat. Police said a nearby crew called the Lyman Place bosses have had an ongoing beef with Shaliver and his friends. One notorious member is Scott Fields, aka Murder One. He earned his nickname for beating two murder raps, including the slaying of a John he allegedly set up for a robbery around Park Hill, Staten Island. Fields, who has been arrested many times and eventually served seven years for manslaughter for a separate slaying, dared to try to launch his own blood set, but was turned down by the Mac Bowler leaders. Fields was lucky not to be targeted himself. He was looking to trying to get authorization. He was going to call it the Staten Island Rangers. He tried to drop his flag, and that's a violation. The gang featured a money unit and a murder unit. The money unit raked in millions from dealing heroin, crack, pot and prescription pills like OxyContin. Members traded extensively in illegal handguns brought to New York through the Iron Pipeline, and earned cash from home robberies, street muggings, extortion, prostitution and kidnapping. 
That didn't include their control of a bustling underground market of contraband at Rikers, where a single loose cigarette, known as a finger can fetch $10, and vulnerable inmates pay protection money to avoid being stabbed or beaten. Assault in the big house also pays well. The MBs supply hospital-grade scalpels for $100 apiece tiny razor-sharp weapons favored by inmates for slashing enemies. Some of these guys have a lot of money. There are Mac bowlers who have properties, businesses, real estate companies, houses in New Jersey. They're not stupid. One alleged supplier was gang associate Michael Lucky Walcott, who was employed at St. Luke's Hospital. He took used scalpels straight from the surgical discard bins and had women smuggle them into jail by hiding them in body cavities. The gang was also heavily involved in the rap industry. A young artist calls himself Balamac, though it was unclear if he was a member of the gang. Some of these guys have a lot of money said one source. Like Italian gangsters, the MBs have their own language and customs, which date to 1969 in California and a group once called the LA Hat Gang. Their name changed in the 1970s to the Five Nine Brims, as the Bloods grew and unified out west before an East Coast branch was created in 1993. That occurred when jailed leader Omar Porti established the United Blood Nation in Rikers to battle the more powerful Latin Kings. Known as OG Mac, Porti set up 10 sets of Bloods across the city. One was named the Five Nine Brims after its LA counterpart, though it operated independently. The Mac Bowler Brims, which formed in 2001, were the most powerful of the four Brim sets in New York. Collectively the New York Blood Brim Army, and are now seeking to break away because of their numbers and influence. Their name mixes a tribute to Mac Porti with slang for gangster or drug dealer or bowler. They embrace a code of ethics every bit as strict as the Mafia's Amerta. Calderon who got busted along with more than 60 other suspected Mac Bowler members, was facing murder charges for allegedly killing one of his own over an ethical transgression. Gang member Frank Russell participated in a botched and unsanctioned home invasion robbery in 2011, in which one of the MB members was killed, and another, Gio Ramirez, was wounded. Instead of helping his companion, Russell bolted and left Ramirez behind. Calderon and Rios then allegedly put out a hit on Russell, who was killed by three associates, Akai Rivera, Adam Kinley, and a third individual. A second homicide involved the shooting death of Matthew Simmons at 1111 Prospect Avenue. The 30-year-old Tremont resident was shot in the chest on the evening of June 26, 2013. Simmons, an alleged marijuana dealer, was the target of a robbery allegedly committed by Matthias Letang, Tyrell Nash, and a third unapprehended individual. Eli Rios was already serving life for a cold-blooded slaying on a Bronx street in 2004. The killer, accompanied by half a dozen gang members, was apparently put off at the victim, Paul Anderson, and a companion dared to be in the area, asking the pair, what are you doing on my block? So he pulled out his gun and chased the two as they fled. Rios killed Anderson and wounded an innocent bystander in the knee. After he was wounded, Anderson stumbled a block away to East 183rd Street and Prospect Avenue, where he collapsed. Both men were rushed to St. Barnabas Hospital, where Anderson died at 3.13 a.m. The new indictment, which came on the heels of a takedown of 14 top Mac bowlers in Binghamton, spelled out 109 alleged crimes, including two homicides and four attempted murders. Bronx DA Robert Johnson called it an extensive catalog of violent crimes, and it reads like an episode of the TV show, The Wire, with patched together transcripts of conversations made over disposable cell phones. The defendants use nicknames such as Chatty, Rizo and Wheezy, who is heard expressing his regret for not shooting someone that he had a disagreement with. But will these roundups dent the Mac Bowler's power? A lot of YGs and YBs would go on to be Mac Bowlers. They're being careful said one source, noting that bugged conversations used to get indictments have made the Mac Bowlers ultra-cautious. Guys will drop their cell phones every 20 days he said. The new generation is supplying bodies so fast, even Rios can't keep up. He was heard remarking on the youth of the gang's newest prison arrivals. Most of the kids you got me locked up here with, I don't even know he said. The indictment included charges against eight defendants and four attempted murders and a kidnapping. All four attempted murders were shootings at various street locations involving beefs with members of rival gangs. Damian Modis allegedly shot Jeffrey Bolden on May 17, 2012. Russell Clark and an individual were charged in the shooting of Jason Rivera on June 12, 2012. Tyrell Nash was charged with the attempted murder of Jerome Roman and the assault of India Scarborough in shootings on July 1, 2012. 
Scarborough was a bystander caught in the line of fire. Nash was also charged in a second attempted murder, along with Matthias Lethang, in the shooting of another rival gang member, on August 13, 2013. Adam Kindly, Michael Herbin and Michael Monroe were charged with kidnapping the son of a reputed drug dealer and rapper on June 14, 2012. Okay, so this was based off of a New York Times article. Admittedly, even though the Mac Bowler brims are nasty, vicious and brutal, they are not in the same league as the Mafia. The brims lack organization, size and wealth in comparison. Many journalists believed that the post was exaggerating. Anyway, both Calderon and Rios topped the tape measure at just below 6 feet. Although Rios didn't project the malevolent menace of Calderon, he was a stone-cold killer who knew how to take care of business. Rios killed without feeling, deliberately and with forethought. Calderon, on the other hand, was a hothead subject to temper tantrums and explosive emotions. He was most dangerous when angry or jealous. Today, the Mac Bowlers are no longer a part of the United Blood Nation, as they felt a way about the actions of the Macs. You can read this, it will clear things up. Well, this about wraps it up. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.